Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks sure. for having us. Hello. And my first question is for Floyd. I know you have a background in entertainment law, but how did you come up with the idea for Digstown? And are any of the stories based on true life cases? Really, the whole, the very beginning of the series started with the image of a Black woman surfing on Martinique Beach, on the Atlantic Ocean. That was really where the, the, that was really the genesis of the idea. And then the legal part of it kind of became, well, what's the procedural engine I can give a show that stars this woman? And that's when I started talking to friends who were uh, legal aid lawyers. And then I was like, yes, this is a good, this would be a good venue for a show because we, whenever we see legal shows, they tend to be from the perspective of, you know, high powered law firms with like, you know, moneyed clients. And so this was an opportunity to do something that was the opposite of that. And yes, um, almost all of the cases are based in some way, shape or form on real cases that have ex have existed within the Canadian legal system. Now, speaking of a woman surfing, Vanessa, I was wondering, have you ever surfed before and how long do you spend in the water for each episode? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I had taken surf lessons years ago before I booked Digstown. I, I met this woman on the beach and she was like, had gray hair down to her knees and she was like in the most amazing shape and she was I was like what do you do every day and she was like I surf and so she took me out into the water and sort of you know tried to teach me how to surf she had a lot of money and I used all of her surfboards and then um after a couple of months I I actually got just too tired and too poor <laughs> as a non-working uh, actor and single mom. And I couldn't get my way over to Malibu to hang out with this, this woman. Um, and then um, I sort of put it away. And then when Digstown came about, um, they asked if I'd ever surfed before. And I was like, well, I'm not lying. I, I actually have surfed before. <laughs> I'm not a good surfer. I just kind of left that part out. Um, and so, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm not a big surfer. Uh, we definitely have a surf double, a wonderful, amazing surf double who who does an extraordinary job. And we don't, you know, shoot those scenes throughout the whole season. We usually end up sort of compiling all of the surfing into, you know, a couple of beach days that we that we get the shots. It must be a lot colder in Nova Scotia than in California. Oh yeah. But you know what, I, you know, actually the wetsuit kind of, you know, it all feels the same to me. I, I'm generally like, I like, a, I like a warm sort of Caribbean or Hawaii kind of vibe, no wetsuit. So whether I'm putting a wetsuit on in Nova Scotia or putting a wetsuit on in California, it's all the same to me. <laughs> now, Shailene, your character has grown so much over the first two seasons. Um, what do you like best about the direction your storyline is taking? I like that we're digging more into Iris's life. And so in season two was very interesting because we got to see a little bit of her background, her upbringing, the relationship with her mom. And that eventually unfolds to how that correlates to the relationship she gets into. Nicole, your character is introduced in season three. What can you tell me about her and what do audiences have to look forward to from her? I think they have lots to look forward to. I think a lot of uh, viewers will see themselves in Ellery. Uh, she goes through a lot of change this season and gets confronted with a lot of her own biases. So I think uh, in that regard, a lot of our viewers will have that in common with her and be able to kind of grow and, and learn alongside of Ellery. Looking forward to that. And uh, Vanessa, the scenery in Nova Scotia, it's so beautiful in this series. What is the difference between working in Nova Scotia and living and working in Toronto? Oh my goodness, it's like night and day. <laughs> it's like, I know, you know, the thing about Nova Scotia that I didn't realize is that there are so many different parts of, of the province. And, and I say that, I mean, I mean, you know, you can go and find some really sort of like, 
interesting, cool, you know, um, sort of city vibe kind of clubs and bars and, you know, cool coffee shops and things like that. And then you can go and be on the water somewhere. And then you can be like in an alley with like drug dealers. And then you can be like, you know, on a beach somewhere. I mean, there's just so many places to shoot. Um, you know, my favorite place to this day is still shooting in uh, North Preston, which, you know, I've said on multiple occasions, it feels like you're in like the deep South, like in some old Southern movie or something. It, it feels like a different time. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful place in the summer. Um, and Toronto is great too, because I'm a Toronto girl, but I do love, I love, I love Nova Scotia. And Shailene, what do you like best about filming there? Oh my God, the sunsets. I don't shut up about the sunsets. Sunsets in Wales, season one, like, God, I think I annoyed the entire cast with my obsession of like wanting to see Wales. And I did. And I tell people all the time, I've traveled a lot. I've seen a ton of sunsets and just, there's something really magical about Nova Scotia sunsets. The air is so clean. There's water everywhere you go. It's just so different from being landlocked. Well, no, not landlocked, but I guess it's just so different from being in Toronto, having that one skyline, looking into the, the Lake Ontario. This is just, God, I don't know. And the fish and chips. I love fish and chips. <laughs> and Nicole, tell me what your thoughts are on working in Halifax. I know you're new to it, but <laughs> yeah, a very fresh outlook on what it is. Uh, I was blown away by it. I um, loved it so much. I stayed. I'm still here. <laughs> I, what I loved about it so much mostly was um, really the locals. I was kind of taken aback by how friendly everybody was and uh, open and welcoming, uh, which kind of made filming a unique experience for me because I'm used to working in Vancouver mostly. And I know all that crew. I've grown up with them my whole life. And uh, this was a new group of people. And it's uh, this great mix of uh, younger people getting into it for the first time and then like old like film and TV industry vets that have come in from maybe Toronto or have been in Halifax and it's just a, a cool new crew to work with that have all been just very welcoming and friendly and and work really hard and love what they do. Floyd what can you tell me about season three what do fans have to look forward to? Um, I think there's a, the, there's a huge turn that happens uh, at the end of episode three um, that propels the show into a different direction uh, going forward. Um, there is a massive event that happens at the end of the season that I think if you're a fan of the show, you're going to find somewhat devastating but also you're gonna be like WTF like what is <laughs> like really what is going on it's it's I mean I'm I'm just really pumped for people to see the end of to get to the end of 308 so they can actually see what we're talking about I think people have to look forward get to look forward to a lot of really great storytelling and a lot like specifically dealing with like really you know uh of the moment issues that we're talking about in the zeitgeist like you know birth alerts with respect to indigenous and black women um and these terrible policies where you know children get taken away from their mothers the moment they're born um we're doing a kind of a, a look at the whole area of police shootings, but doing it in sort of like a Digstown way. Um, we're looking at sexual assault, um, but once again, like we're doing it in, this, in the way that we would, we would look at these issues. Um, and I just think there's a lot of really, I don't know, there's a lot of really great acting that people get to look forward to. I think, you know, the cast this season is just, you know, firing on all cylinders and, you know, Nicole is a new addition to the team. I just would tell everybody to wait for episode seven. Um, Cause I think she's just like, you know, 
her work is like amazing. So yeah, I think we like, there's a lot of things to look forward to. That sounds really intriguing. And I have just one final question. I know it sounds like you're covering pretty much every story there is, but is there any type of story that you haven't covered that you would like to in a future season or episode? Um, <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's funny that you asked this question because I was actually writing down the things that I want to talk about if we were to get a season four. And I think for me, one, and once again, like, you know, we start with an issue, but then we want to look at like, what's the human angle in terms of deal, getting to talk about that. And one of the things I'm really interested in, interested in is the housing crisis right now and what's happening and how, you know, people can't afford to own a home or rent or rent a space because, you know, there's lots of people who are just buying up uh, property. And one of the things that I was fascinated by was the protest that happened here in Nova Scotia where the 10 year old girl was pepper sprayed. And I thought, okay, there's something there that we could maybe build a story around. There's also the story about the guy in Toronto who was building the tiny house, like tiny shelters in, Mo in Moss Park. And the police came or the, the city came and basically said, you can't have them here and started tearing them down. I think, there's, I think there's something very interesting within the intersection of those two real life events that if we got a season four, it would be something I'd be interested in getting into. Yeah, that all sounds really fascinating. I cannot wait to see season three to start with, and I hope there will be a season four. Pretty sure there will be. Um, and I just wanna say thank you all so much for chatting with me today. Thank you for having thank us. You. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.